Welcome to this new episode of uh, Von Cam. A little bit different as you, well, it's not on Monday as I usually put them on Monday because, well, there was the announce of the Harman Phoenix um, new film, uh, analog film. Uh, and um, so it's quite exciting. Um, I want to start by really thanking a lot uh, the friends from uh, Perro Image, uh, who distribute El Ford products, not only, but uh, in Switzerland, and the whole team of Leica, uh, the Leica store in Geneva, uh, and also Leica Switzerland, which is great teams. They're, they're super fun, friendly, uh, competent. So um, I'm really happy. I was really happy when they thought of me as the uh, as an experimenter, uh, um, basically to test this new film, which I didn't have much information about. Basically, I'll put uh, um, a capture, a picture of the film, how I received it. Basically, a 100 to 400 ISO film, color. Um, and yeah, I thought, oh, okay, let's let's try this out and see what can come out of it. So I actually have my small sticker I, I had stuck on my camera to remember how many ISOs I put it to. Uh, I first wanted to go to 300, but uh, I thought, oh, let's go for 400. Um, I will talk about, I'm going to talk uh, about the equipment I chose. But yeah, thanks again for, for the friends to to letting me test this film before and have this to present you today. So let's check the equipment. So basically, um, having been given a film that I didn't really know anything about apart from its sensitivity, which was rated between 100 and 400 ISO. I was like, oh, okay, what can I use? And I, I kind of went back to a, a reflex camera, which I really love, the R8 from Leica. There was still an R9 that came out after. It, it's discontinued, but it goes up to one eight thousandths of a second. It's got, it's really a modern camera, fantastic to use and got a fantastic grand of lenses. And I happened to have a 50 millimeter Sunlux 50 millimeter 1.4 that could help me maybe experiment uh, with low lights with this film, which I really didn't have much ideas about. And uh, pushing the film to its upper stated limit of 400 ISO. Um, I also thought, oh, let's try, not knowing really what was gonna come out of it. Uh, let's try uh, this classic 19 millimeter uh, Elmarit R. Uh, it's also a good way to show those incredible lenses that actually don't have any new cameras meant for them, but they're adaptable, but I use them with my Leica SL2. Uh, but fantastic lens, and I thought, like, oh, let's give it a try with a, with this wide angle classic. It's the Mac 1. Um, there was a Mac 2 that came out, which was supposed to be better, but I think this one has more personality. And also another classic, which I had in, in mind, was the 180 uh, f3.4, um, the Apotel it R uh, lens, military lens originally. Um, made in Canada. It's, it's followed me in many places and endured quite a bit, but really incredible uh, formula, very, very well defined, very strong character, um, very precise lens. And so that, that's basically kind of dusty. I'm not the expert for undusting my stuff. But, um, and also one extra a lens that I couldn't fit under my lens, uh, my macro lens, uh, my presentation as usual. The, the famous, at least for me, uh, also in R mount, obviously, uh, the Telet R 400mm f6.8, which focuses basically by sliding this. Um, a great lens, in my opinion. Kind of big, but yeah, as you can see. Um, but yeah, I so thought, let's let's go for this. It uh, might be interesting. I don't really know what the film is going to be about, so... Um, also, there are lenses that are pretty well documented online, either on YouTube or uh, on web pages. So if you want to see their inherent characteristics uh, first, I thought that would be a good way to be able to really see what comes out of that film. So going from the 19 millimeter to 400, 400 millimeter, um, let's go check the images. I think you're all here uh, to see that. So the Harman Phoenix uh, now is announced. So that's why we can talk about it. The first image, that's the one on the left. That was the film that that the friends from Leica and, and Perro Image um, gave me to try out. So that's all the information I had. Basically 24 exposures, C41, so obviously color, but who knows, sometimes you may want to complicate yourself and go for a C41 black and white film, but color, obviously. Um, and yeah, the equipment I decided to use to play the safe side. Um, probably in the reviews, I had no idea who else had the opportunity to to test this film. Um, I thought like, oh, okay, most people are gonna use it 
at low ISOs, at 100 ISO or 200 ISO to reveal the grain to see some of its characteristics. I'm experimental, so I thought, oh, let's go for something more. Let's try it. Let's push it to its limits, announced limits, so 400 ISO. Um, basically, we had an announcement on Instagram coming soon and other, other platforms. Um, then the 1st of December, so I had kind of an idea where I should uh, uh, focus my shoot to be developed. And then the friends from Laika Geneva, um, they gave me the scans from the film, and that's what I got. So I got 27 exposures from this 24 exposure film. So cool. I'm completely messed up one. I have no idea why. Uh, you can see it, this gray image. Um, I don't know. I, I must have... Uh, I don't taken a picture with the cap on, but there's a small exposure on the top, so I don't know. I don't I honestly don't remember, but uh, yeah. So kind of interesting what we see at first is this first scan. The interesting thing with film is it's analog, but when we talk about it on a YouTube video or whatever, uh, and use it for for digital presentation, obviously it has been digitized. So you already are messing up with the color balance with with lots of other details. You add uh, um, a layer of scanning. So, uh, But obviously the film is kind of tends to go to warmer colors, the yellow colors, the golden colors. Um, and as it's digitally scanned, and because of my work, I like to work with the matter, the analog matter of the film. So I really edit it in a digital way, but I just modify the color balance uh, the light, uh, the contrast, but not not anything else, and and that's what I got finally when I decided to modify them to my taste to get back some of the information, the low lights and the highlights. Uh, so let's go to a few of those pictures. Actually, I selected twenty four from the whole bunch to talk about. The first one that's just to show what I was saying before. The original scan on the left, it's kind of warm, and, and the film is like this. When you look at the negative, it's it's definitely very warm, but it's always hard to know if it's the substrate or if it's the response. So, uh, because I don't know this film well, I, I did it how I liked it, and the result is on the right. So, as you can see, it seems that the low lights tend to go in the greens. We'll see a little bit more after, and but otherwise, it's it's a really nice. The grain is nice pretty marked, but uh, I'm pushing the film, obviously. Um, lots of detail, pretty pretty result for a first image. Um, uh, here's something more neutral when uh, once edited. Um, just gives you an idea of the responses. We already have a glimpse of the blues. I really like the blues in the skies, uh, how it renders them. So you can see it on the picture on the left. And otherwise, low lights, when you push them, obviously there's something going with the cyan and the green. Uh, but otherwise, a good response for this film. Um, here again, the, the logo that uh, Harman teased was, was a bird, so every time I would see a, a crow, I would take a picture, if it was interesting to my taste. Uh, uh, obviously, I didn't have um, five months to empty my role, so I went around and tried to do some interesting stuff. And for those who knew my work, that's, that looks like it. I always, almost always work portrait mode and not uh, not uh, panoramic. And yeah, really interesting rendering. Um, the highlights would seem to go towards some, maybe a little bit of magenta in the very highlights, but interesting blue renderings for the skies. Here, uh, that's the first image. We're going to see a, more of those, but you can see there's some halo around uh, high uh, luminosity uh, zones, very high contrast parts. Um, so obviously this film doesn't have an anti-aliation uh, layer or a very limited one. Um, and here you can see the grain. It's actually pretty coarse using it 400 ISO, but really nice looking, different looking. Uh, I, I think it, it's got its really a very different character from many other films we, we see today. And yeah, th that's the image on the right obviously is the zoom in from the one on the left and yeah here again um the blues the, the blues in the skies I'm, I'm really looking forward to try more of this film um that's really to me the highlight that comes out of this film for my taste i really like the blues and we're going to see how the blues can be modified by the other parts of the image um again to show the detail and the characteristics 
very interesting grain, good definition. Here again on the left, that's uh, on the river Arve, uh, was the wide angle here, I mean, it was the 19 millimeter. Again, it gives you an idea of how the blues in the sky are, uh, are rendered and how the low lights tend to go on the greens again. But there's a, it keeps its warmth. Uh, on the right, we can see this uh, halo uh, effect. On, that's a, uh, the cathedral of uh, Saint-Pierre in Geneva. Uh, the tower, the sky is very bright around, and you can see it goes towards the magenta, the oranges. It gives it some kind of feel. The, ha the halo is present, but not that, uh, that marked, as we could see with some of the other films where, the, like for example, the Vision 3 without the uh, elation uh, layer. Um, but yeah, interesting rendering. Again, here are some details. Uh, on the left, that's the Summilux, obviously 50 millimeter, 1.4 at full aperture. You have this warmth. You have the, those greens in the low lights when you push when you push back the film uh, in post production, which I really find interesting. Um, if you don't have that strong of contrasts, like you have on the picture on the right, it's a very warm film, very precise, as you can see with this man in the shadow. Um, and again very specific character in the color rendering. Here on those two pictures, same thing, we can see the yalation, the halo coming out on the sky, modifying, going towards the magentas. I'm not very, sh I'm not sure about where the light sources come from and anyhow, uh, you can see the blue of the sky is being distorted by those uh, halos in a very interesting way. I don't really understand yet, but we're going to see more examples. And again, the low lights, the very low lights tend to go in the blues and the low lights in the greens. So you, you have some kind of richness and in information you get back when you when you go into the luminosity and contrast settings afterwards, after scanning. Here's a good example of that on the left. Uh, as you can see, you have this kind of traditional halo, not that wide, uh, going towards the orange, the yellows. Uh, but the uh, low lights start kind of going towards the green, as we've seen. The part which is lit by the light um, goes towards the magenta. So it, it's interesting. You, if I'm sure I'm looking forward to have more roles and experiment with now that I know a little bit more of the character. I think you can really do some very interesting stuff in the way this film reacts to to the high, the low lights. Not very linear. And if you look at the spectrums. Um, in Lightroom, for example, uh, you'll see you see the informations there, but sometimes they, they tend to be not the the mismatch is kind of weird, but the results are nice. I really like it. Uh, on the right, as you can see, if you work on the original image, you will get some blue in the very low lights when you compensate the greens, but you do get the detail. You do get the information. Here are two kind of not very interesting photos, but. Again, just for the example of the, the blues in the sky on the right uh, picture, you can see it, the highlights are going to modify the blue. The blue is going to be very natural, kind of old school. Um, but you can really manage when you know, I'm sure once you know the film better, you can really manage to give some very interesting ambiances to your compositions. Here a blue that's more or less preserved with less of those very highlights, but still an example of what I was saying. Uh, I didn't do it by purpose, and obviously I didn't know the film, but you can see you can you can really have some subtlety in the way you, you manage that. And on the right, this, uh, this halo effect on the very highlights, uh, you can see uh, how it reacts with this image, which is very contrasty. Um, so basically the kind of orangey red, uh, warm halo, the magenta and the highlights, we don't see that much here. The green coming out in the low lights and the underexposed parts and the very underexposed going towards the blue. Um, here, that's a, on the left, that's a detail of the picture on the right. Um, just to point out that it seems that the yellows, while the film is very warm, the yellows tend to be kind of flattened with the reds. And this boat is a typical Mouette de Genève, uh, which is bright yellow and this bright red line um, in the middle. You can see that the yellows are kind of orangey red. The red is kind of red, like we can see on the flag on the right. Uh, 
but yeah there is there's something probably to be aware of with the yellows i'm looking forward to try other worlds but otherwise the details there uh, the rendering is very interesting lots of character as i previously mentioned and here are the images with um, with the most halos um, obviously i didn't really know what i was getting into when i took the first pictures so i I really on those two pictures actually the one on the left I took two of them one focusing on the bridge the one the other one focusing on the reflections on the water I was kind of thinking that maybe there would be some halo effect or something because of the trends in filmmaking right now um, I was obviously right uh, I wasn't sure let's be honest but um, I really tried to a little bit underexpose, even if film can usually manage higher lights. But here I'm happy I did because we can see that the halo is ki kind of controlled. With those low lights going towards the greens, I, I really like the rendering of the, the Wilsdorf bridge. That's the one on the left, a bridge that, um, that's near the main, the central um, building of Rolex, the watchmaker. Um, beautiful bridge. Um, but the results are very interesting. Not too much of a halo. Uh, on the right, even with those very high contrast, I think we don't have as much as we would have with uh, Vision 3 with its Remjet uh, removed. So I think that's a more refined alternative to, uh, for example, some Cine Still 400 uh, or 800 um, uh, D, D, T. Oh, I forget about it. <laughs> Um, and yeah, two last pictures. I just wanted to finish with uh, this halo effect. I think it's a very interesting halo effect. That's the TV tower, the national TV tower in Geneva, um, with the sky and this incredible sunset in the background. As you can see here, I think the, the halo would have been huge with uh, with um, uh, another film without uh, halation uh, below. I think here it's pretty well contained. It adds quite a bit to the to this picture um, and you can see how I treated it that's the scan is on the left and I actually was able to get some information in the highlights and the lowlights that was a good um, to me a good example to finish on how this film does contain lots of information that you can do things with the color response is kind of different and that's what's make that what makes it very interesting to me and hopefully to you too so yeah Hopefully that was a good glimpse, maybe different than other reviews of this new film. Um, super, again, super thankful to have been able to enjoy working with it and see the results. Um, uh, thanks to Leica, to Perro Image, to Harman. And um, yeah, if you have questions, comments, suggestions, don't hesitate. And yeah, catch you next time.